Hello again, it's Trudy here from Hot Patterns and we are back after a long hiatus uh, with another fabulous new pattern and a little kind of mini tutorial for you. Now this pattern is our latest knit top or t-shirt, it's the Riviera Regatta t-shirts and I wanted to show you um, a couple of examples of them and also a quickie kind of how to put it together. And I want to show you that for a reason. The reason being that we have uh, graded this as a beginner pattern. And I know for beginner sewers, sometimes the thought of doing a knit top is a bit like, <laughs> I don't think so. But I wanted to show you just how easy it is and how you can get a really good professional result with it. Now, before we go into it, I'm just going to quickly go through the pattern with you because, of course, we've done some variations. There's different things you can do. And this is one of our samples. Um, you can see that, well, clearly it's a stripe, obviously. Um, but the whole point about this top is that the front and the back bodice has two features. One is they are pieced together. You've got this little patchworky area here, just on the top shoulder. And you've also got one down here at the, oh, get rid of the thread, um, at the hem. So you've got kind of a patchwork bit. And the other thing that's really important to note, and you'll see it more on a stripe fabric, is that they're cut on the bias. The main parts of the front and back bodice are cut on the bias. And there are two reasons for that. One is it kind of adds a really nice kind of uh, silhouette to the A-line shape. And the other one is the kind of drape inside it, the kind of interior drape. You won't get that if you cut a knit on the straight without making it very, very A-line and very kind of maternity wear, which we kind of want to avoid. So this is bias cut, but it's very, very easy to deal with because of course it's just a knit. It's not like a, a silk charmeuse or something which, which on the bias would just be a nightmare. So we've got this one, as you can see, in a blue and white stripe, but you can, because we've got patchworky things here, you can introduce different elements. Maybe a solid, maybe another pattern, maybe another stripe, different colorways, it's all to play for. And the one I'm wearing, this one, is actually the same pattern, but I removed all the patchwork pieces. All I did was draw in the seam allowance on my pattern and kind of pin the pattern piece together so it's a whole front and a whole back and then just cut it out and proceed it. The nice thing about that is, is that if you've got something like a sweater knit, like this is, and you may not want to be seeming through sweater knits too much because they can be a little bit unpredictable, then you can just make it with a plain front and a plain back. Still looks really cool, still really kind of effortless and very groovy. It's a really nice casual t-shirt. As I said, the, one of the reasons it's so nice and casual, it's got this kind of A-line drape to it, which is really nice and relaxed and very, very easy to wear. So you've got two variations on this one with sleeve length. You've got the full length sleeve, which we've done here, or you can just leave the sleeves off and have more like a cut-on cap sleeve. So depending on what season it is, what you want to wear it with, you've got a lot of options. I mean, this, for instance, in a more eveningy fabric, like a, a, a knit velvet, would be fantastic for the holiday. It's really, really good. Um, in something like a cotton jersey, like this is more of a, of, a, of a rib, it's going to be much more casual for the weekends. You've really got a lot of things you can do with this. So that's our basic t-shirt. Um, I would say if you're looking for things to wear with it, you want to go skinny on the bottom. So a skinny jean, I, mean, I don't mean like tight, 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 I mean slim. A slim jean, a pencil skirt, even a straight leg pant like the Marrakesh, as long as it's kind of straight up and down, you're going to be good. You've got a little bit of fluidity at the top. So it's very, very easy to wear. I'm going to show you in a moment how easy it is to make. You won't believe it. And for beginners, it's perfect. Well, now, the thing to remember with this t-shirt is it's designed to have the front bodice and the back bodice pieced together. Think patchwork. That's kind of what it is. So I'm going to get Jeremy to zoom in in a moment and show you how the pieces go together because they really need to go in a certain sequence, but it's not hard. It's really, really simple. Um, and there's also two different methods of actually uh, the stitches that you would use to join them. And when we've done this and we've actually pieced them together, I'm going to flip them over and I'm going to show you the two different methods that you can use. So I've laid the pieces out here on this table. You can see it's not a very big table, but there's basically the edge of it like this. And this is what it is. You've got front neckline here, side seam, hem, other side seam. And obviously these are your patchwork parts. And this here, and this at this edge, these become either the armhole for your sleeveless one or the shoulder seam for your one with the long sleeves. Now what you have to do, and you need to do it in this sequence, is you need to join these two pieces first along this seam here. There's a notch, there's a notch. You just match them up and you join them. If you do not do it this way, you will have problems, so please do it this way. Once you've joined those two and it's a single piece, then you can join that to that. You can join this to there whenever you wish. Well, now I've pieced the front and the back together, um, I'm going to show you 
the different seams I've used, the different seam types I've used. Because if you're a beginner, you probably won't have an overlocker or you may call it a serger. You probably won't have one. You probably just have a machine that does the standard straight stitch, zigzag stitch, stretch stitches. Now I must confess, my machines, most of my machines have about a gazillion different stretch stitches. I never, ever, ever, ever use them. What's the point? You can do just as well with a long, narrow zigzag stitch. I'm going to show you what I mean by doing this and I'll hold it up. Uh, normally a zigzag stitch, that's a zigzag stitch. Okay, we're not going to do that. Here's what we're going to do. Oh, I love those squeaks, don't you? Like that. Long and narrow. Zigzag long. It gives you still a little bit of stretch on it and uh, it stops your seams popping, which you really need to do. Bear in mind, as I said in the beginning, uh, this particular style doesn't actually need the stretch of the t-shirt for fit. It's not like a tight, tight t-shirt where it needs the stretch to fit. It needs the knit and drape the t-shirt to drape nicely. So you don't have to worry too much about, oh, it's not stretching that much. It's fine. It'll, the stitches will stretch enough for you to be able to, to wear it with comfort and ease and no problem. So I'm going to get Jeremy to zoom in now. I'm going to show you on the back of them, first of all, the kind of seams I've done, and secondly, which direction to press them in. Okay. Um, I flipped these over so we've got the back side, the wrong side to look at. We've got two for seam types. The first type is your classic one where you basically sew it together using your long, narrow zigzag stitch and then you press the seams open. Here it is there. I'm just going to put this coloured card underneath because you can actually see. There's the seam allowance there and you know you, see, you press it open so it's open like that. And you can see this one, this is the um, shoulder piece that we did first. We sewed it first, we pressed it open and then you can sew the whole thing together. And that is a perfectly acceptable finish, especially on a t-shirt. T-shirting doesn't fray, it doesn't, it just doesn't. It behaves itself really nicely. So you don't have to worry about finishing the edge. It's not gonna ravel or fray or anything. You can just use your long, narrow, zigzag stitch and it's perfect. So that's seam number one. This is the easiest way to do it. Any way you can hold that up? I, I can hold it up for you, anything. This is the grumpy cameraman as a <laughs> lady described me recently on YouTube. We did, we had a lady describing Jeremy recently as who is the humorous cameraman? I thought, he's not humorous, that's Jeremy. <laughs> I'm normally focusing and trying to make yes, sure that I'm getting everything focused, in. Yes, you're aren't you, darling? Okay, so that's that. Can you see that really well? Yeah. Okay, so that's like a standard seam um, uh, method where you sew them together, press them open. It's really important to press them open with this one and then uh, you're, you're done, you're good. And you see the front of it, when you've pressed it, it looks lovely. It's all neat and clean and ooh, 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 it's fab. So that's your easy and standard way of doing a seam. Uh, and like I say, if you're a beginner sewer, you're unlikely to have an overlocker. You're probably gonna have just a standard machine that can do the zigzag stitch. That's what you do and don't stress it. The other method, of course, is if you've moved along a little and you've got yourself an overlocker. I'm sorry, I can't get used to calling it a serger. I don't know what that is. Um, an overlocker, basically, I'm gonna put this behind here, I'm making sure if you can see it. Hang on, I'm going to go down, okay. Okay, um, an overlocker basically cleans the edge with a knife and kind of does a, a kind of a chain stitch around the edge of the fabric while it sews. So you're, with one pass, you're sewing a seam and you're cleaning the edge. Now I have got a four thread overlocker, which is a perfectly good overlocker and it can do a nice stretch stitch, but I don't much like it. And I don't much like setting it up to do that. So what I tend to do is I do my long straight and my long zigzag stitch. Just gonna focus on your hand. Go ahead and focus. I do my long zigzag stitch just like the other one, and then I clean off the edges with the overlocker. I get the same effect, but here is the important bit. When you're doing this seam, your two uh, layers are joined together at the edge. You cannot press them open. I mean, you just can't, it's just not gonna happen. So you've got to decide which direction you press them in. And here is how you do it. I'm gonna get Jeremy to move back and focus on me because this is all about me. Well, no, it's not really, but um, because I need to show you the direction I'll it goes. Second, would you? All right. Okay. Okay, so here is what you do. When you are pressing seams that are joined together, they have to go in a direction. They have to go that way or that way or whichever way you know they need to go. And your key is normally around this area here, they go like that. They go up and back and out. Okay? If you've got them from the bust downwards, then they go down towards the hem. Let gravity do the work for you. So let me show you what I've done here. On the bottom triangle, they go down like that. Okay, that way. There's the hemline, that's the side seam, down. That's the, where the seam allowance is. On the top edges, 
Again, you've got this one going down because gravity, you can't fight gravity. And this one here goes out to the side. For some reason, I can't remember where I was taught this, but I know I was taught it, it's probably in like Neolithic times because I'm very, very old. Um, I was taught that your darts or your seam allowances or anything that has to press open and it has to have a direction, they always go that way. So you go that way and that way, always towards the centre back. I have no idea why. I couldn't tell you. I do know when you're doing uh, seams like this, the this, uh, seams that way should always go towards the shoulder or towards the elbow. So it's just an easy thing to remember, just kind of up and back. Think of doing the bus stop like that and you're kind of good. Um, so that's your other method of doing seams where you've got it, um, two layers together and they're pressed the other way. It doesn't really matter. No, neither method is going to give you a better thing. This is just quicker because overlockers is really, really quick. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to join up the, seam, uh, the shoulder seams, press those open and I'm going to then do the neckband. And the neckband is the real key to any t-shirt, the kind of neckline. Get the neckline right, everything else kind of falls together. Get it wrong and it will look really, really, really bad and we do not want that. Alrighty, so now we've got our um, front and back piece together across the shoulder seams. There's your shoulder seams, armhole, armhole, if you were doing the sleeveless one, or shoulder seam. Back neck, front neck, down here, hems down here. So it's all pieced together and it's all ready to have the neckband attached. Now the neckband is the key, got to get this right. But it's not really difficult, you just have to know a few tricks. Okay, so here's my neckband. When I see in the instructions, I always do this, say join it together to make a loop. This is what I mean, okay? This is your loop. It's double thickness, you've got the raw edges here, and this is going to be your neckband. Now, there is something that you would be very wise to consider before you go ahead and cut your neckband, in fact, before you cut anything of your real fabric, is take a little scrap of your fabric and see what it does when it stretches. Here is a piece of that fabric. Now, when I stretch it, and I'm hoping Joe's gonna see this, when I stretch it, do you see what it does? It's curling back on itself, okay? Let me see if it does that, okay. It curls back on itself, which is really irritating. Why is it irritating? Because I know when you, you're gonna be slightly stretching your neckband to sew it on, when you do and it's curling, you will have some very unladylike language. You will not like it. So, my handy hint for you there, if your knit curls, and not all of them do, some of them are perfectly stable, if your knit curls, then you're going to be a smart girl. Yes, you are. And you are going to make your neckband a little bit thicker. Maybe, I don't know, I've cut this one, not even, maybe three eighths of an inch or half an inch, that's it. And I always like to add it to the neck. Half an well. inch thicker or half an inch in total? Half an inch, just half an inch thicker. Just okay. an extra half an inch thicker. It, it's really, it's a really like doesn't matter measurement, just a little bit more, a smidgen more. I know it's not a very technical measurement, but really don't need a lot. If you're smarter than me, and you probably are, you'll remember to also do that on your neckline, but I never remember that. But the important thing is that instead of this, this is my normal width for this neck, this neckband, that I've cut it to that. I'm gonna show you the difference because it's just a little bit, but you see, just that little bit extra. So I'm going to show you now how to mark out the neckband to put it on. And this again, it all depends on the fabric you use, how much stretch there is to it. There's no formula. I can't say to you, ooh, if your knit is this much stretch, then you do this. Can't do it. It's down to heaviness of knit, how many stitches per inch, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff, cannot do it. There's no real formula. It's a test and adjust thing, which is why when T-shirts or knit garments are made in factories or made in production facilities, they make lots of prototypes first to make sure they've got the stretch ratios absolutely perfect. You haven't got that, that luxury. You've got to basically tweak it and test and adjust as you go. So here's how you do it. The first thing to do is to quarter up your neckband and your neckline, and here is how you do it. You basically start, you've got it folded in half, okay? You basically start with your seam. There's your seam that joins it. I like this seam to be at the center back. Some people like it to be at the shoulder. I don't think you can even see the seam. There's a seam there. You have to, to join it. I mean, it doesn't come, it doesn't come ready prepared as a loop, I'm afraid. So I put a pin there, and then I folded it in half like this. And I put a pin there. And then I've matched those two pins up, and I put pins there. So now I've got four pins to mark four quarters. And then I've done the same thing on the neckline, and here's how you do it on the neckline, because it's kind of a little bit sneaky, this one. Uh, you basically match, match your shoulder seams like this, and then you'll find your center back and your center front. Do not imagine for a moment that the shoulder seam is the other quarter, because it's not, you'll be off a little bit. And then you pull it apart again, and you match your center back pin to your center front pin, and there you will find 
the other quarter. So I've got four pins in here, so that this is all quartered up and this is all quartered up. And you will notice if you measure off the pattern that your neckband is approximately two inches smaller than the neckline. This is as it should be. If you have a very, very loosely woven knit like this, this sweater knit, how loosely woven was it? So loose. Um, you will probably have to make it a little bit smaller, I mean shorter. Less, uh, more than two inches smaller than the neckline, but you've got to test and adjust it. So here is what we're going to do. We're going to pin this on, and you will see what I mean, and you'll see how it should look when it's done. All right, so I've pinned it on. I've kind of caught it up, and I've pinned it on at four different points. Let me show you how it looks like that. Okay, so now what you have to do is go in between those pins. This is the easiest way to do it. Okay, there's your loop. There's your t-shirt. Pull it apart like that's so the two pins that you've used already. Touch and mark your halves like that and then pin those together. So you do that all the way around till you've got many pins in your neckline, in your neckband, and that's gonna show you if it's gonna fit properly. Okay, now I've pinned it all the way around, so we've got basically eight pins, one at each quarter and one between each one. And when it's done, it looks like this. You will see that the neckband does not lay completely flat against the t-shirting. This is quite as it should be. Um, let me show you why. See this neckband on here, on this other version of this lovely t-shirt? It kind of doesn't lay flat, and it doesn't go in like this, and it doesn't flip out. You don't want it to flip out, that would be ridiculous. The thing with the neckband is it's got to lay against the body in a very kind of relaxed way. This is why knit neckbands are so fantastic. If you can hear a jingle jangle in the background, um, it's um, puppy Emmett, our, our basset hound, who has decided to, he'd like to view what we're doing today. He hates to be left out of it. And you also hear him snoring in a minute. I apologize, he's very lazy, he falls asleep all the time. So, um, so the neckband is going to be um, laying flat towards here. And you can see this one lays nice and smooth. You've got to bear in mind, it's got to lay against your body and your body isn't just flat, it kind of undulates. It kind of goes flat and in and out and all that kind of stuff. That's why knits are so good with the neckband. So I'm going to sew the neckband on, and because I've done a little bit of a thicker neckband, I'm going to use a little bit of a wider seam allowance. This should be 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to use more like 5 eighths of an inch. And then it's really ready. I'm going to press it under as well. I'm going to show you the back of it and so you can see how it is. And then we're ready to do the sleeves. Now I've attached the neckband, and if you can see it, I'm just going to pick it up and show you. You can see it doesn't lay flat. It kind of sits like this. That's what it needs to do because your body, as I said before, is not flat. Now this one, I've done it with uh, big seam allowances because I added the extra, of course, and I'm going to go in and trim it off shortly. But let me just explain something to you. If this is the first time for you doing a neckband, you may be a bit like, oh, I'm too scared. Believe me, the first time I did it, I was a bit scared too. So I'm going to give you kind of like permission. <laughs> I know people like to kind of follow instructions a lot of the time uh, to do it this way. If you are joining a neckband, you can, of course, start with a really small seam allowance. All the way around, do a small seam allowance. And then kind of go in and do another pass, maybe a little bit narrower, smaller seam allowance, and go on and go on until you get the neckband to the thickness you like. This is all about what you want, okay? I can say, well, I like a neckband this thickness, but it really boils down to what you would like. It's your T-shirt, after all. So you can always do two, three, four, as many passes around here as you want getting kind of narrower and narrower. Do be aware, of course, that unpicking it's a bit of a pain, so just be aware of that. But if the first few times you do a neckband, it's a good method to do it so it's not freaking you out completely. You're like, oh no, it's all gonna go horribly wrong. It's really not. So what you have to do that is take your time, go all the way around, and when you've done it, of course, you press it like this, so you get this nice kind of finish like this. So it looks all nice and neat. Um, as I say, I'm gonna go in and, and, and trim this off because you don't want a big seam allowance around the neck. But your next task is to add the sleeves. Now, you've got two choices here. If you're gonna do this as a sleeveless one, then this is your armhole, this edge here. You would simply hem it and then join the side seams. Do not think that you do the side seams first and then hem it. Please don't do that. Uh, if you do it, you'll see why I say to you not to, because it, it doesn't work so well. You get a big bunch around the armhole. So if you're going to do it sleeveless, you're just going to go and press a hem allowance under. Oh, yes, you are. And then you're going to sew it, and you're good. But I'm going to show you how to do the sleeve. And this is called um, putting the sleeve in on the flat. And it's a really good method. I use it for pretty much any one-piece sleeve or any sleeve that where the underarm seam lines up with the side seam. It could be forward, it could be backwards. This is how I put my sleeves in. I hardly ever put them in 
when they're like made into a whole sleeve, a whole sleeve tube, I hardly ever put them in in the round like that, unless it's a tailored sleeve, it's a different match altogether. So I do this for t-shirts, I do it for uh, blouses, tops, all sorts of things, dresses, everything, as long as it can do this. So all we're gonna do is you've got your notch there to show the- um, Hang on a second, you're out, of, you're out of focus, bring it up, yeah. Notch, there's the notch. There's your, there's your um, shoulder seam notch. You're gonna match that notch to the shoulder seam and just sew these in like this. And don't forget your seam allowance is gonna be pressed out that way, towards the shoulder, towards the elbow, always going that way. So I'm gonna do that and then we're going to basically finish off. Side seams, hem, dark. Now I've joined the uh, sleeves into the uh, shoulder seam on the flat. I want to go ahead and uh, complete my top, but before I do, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page about the seam allowances, because I know it sounds a bit like, well, who cares, but truthfully, it, it kind of gives you a better finish, and it makes it look more professional if you're in the correct way. So if you're going to be using your overlocker, as we showed you earlier, your edges will be together, and so you can press them whichever way you want. So with, for instance, with this sleeve here, the hem of the sleeve's down here, here's the shoulder seam, or the armhole seam, um, your seam will be like that, and you press them that way, towards the elbow, easy peasy. But if you're gonna do it just on the normal, kind of narrow uh, zigzag stitch, then what do you do? Well, I always press it open first, like that, like the other seams, like, can I find one, like that, I press it open first, and then I repress it so that all the seams are going down towards the elbow. Let me show you what I mean. Um, you can see, I think you can see, oh, now this is all white background, so where's my, I've got a blue card. All the seams, all the seam allowances are going that way, down towards the elbow, down towards the hem, okay? So I press them that way. So first I press them open, and then I press them flat together. And it gives you a much, much better, more professional look, because basically, when you've got that, your seam allowances are not fighting gravity. Gravity is a force of nature, it will win. There's no point fighting it. So, this one, you know, when you're wearing it, your gravity is with that, unless you're walking around with your hands above your head, which I doubt. So, seam allowance is that way. So that's the easy, easy, easy way to do it. Um, now, the final thing we have to do now is, we have to do side seams and hems. It's the simplest thing in the world. The one thing I would tell you is this, when you're gonna do your sleeve and your bottom hem, press them up. First, if you don't press them up, they are going to look dreadful. You'll be able to rescue them, sure you will, but why give yourself the grief? Just do it the easy way. It's all going to be beautiful. Okay, so that's our top done. You can see, looking rather gorgeous. Contrasty sleeves, a little bit of patchwork, other contrast sleeve, and neckband. Now, um, here's the thing with this. I have just finished this with a normal hem. Okay, and uh, I've used the narrow zigzag because, you know, I don't mind it. But you may not like how it looks, and that's fine. You don't have to do it that way. What you can do, if you wish, for your uh, bottom hem and for your sleeve hem or your cuffs, is you can do a similar method to the neckband. Uh, so here is what you would do if you wanted to do that. If you decided, let's say for instance, you wanted to have, I don't know, an inch wide uh, hem band or sleeve band, then here's what you do. You cut your band, to be twice the depth of your band plus two seam allowance. So that's one inch plus one inch plus three eighths and three eighths. So you're gonna get a total of two inches, two and three quarter inches deep. That's what you do and then you cut it the same length as this minus about two inches-ish. It's not an exact science, you have to fiddle with it. For the um, sleeves, you cut it the same length minus about three quarters of an inch, give or take. So. Once you've got your bands ready, the same method as we do with the neckline, into a loop, then you chop off an inch from your bottom and an inch from your uh, sleeve edge. And then just add it exactly the same way as you did with the uh, neckband. You quarter it up, pin it on, sew it on, and you're done. And this is the only instance when you'll find the seam allowance goes up back into the body because you don't want it dangling down there. So if you want to finish it off with just the classic hem like that, no problem, go ahead. If you want to do a hem band, easiest thing in the world to do, just use your neckband pattern and cut a lot more than you think you need. That's it. Okay. So here we have our completed top on the stand looking, it has to be said, 
rather gorgeous. I mean, come on. Um, now, a quick word with you about this fabric. The fabric clearly is the same print, but in different colorways. And um, I had this festering in my stash probably about five years, I promise you. And I remember it being five years because I made an outfit for Baby Sienna in this and this for her first birthday. And she's maybe six in a couple of years' time. So this is definitely- A couple of weeks' time. Sorry, sorry, in a couple of weeks' time. So this is definitely like a five-year-old stash. But uh, I finally used all of the pink and all of the blue and all of the white now. So that bit is gone my stash. But the nice thing about it is you get to use, you know, different colors and different tones and it looks really cool. I mean, this is of course the same print, but you can use different prints, different solid colors, a mix of solids and prints, stripes, whatever you fancy. Black and white stripes of different sizes are gonna look really good with this one. Um, so what can I tell you? This is a really simple t-shirt to make. You saw how easy it was. It's gonna look really, really good. Great for a beginner, uh, great to make just as a nice casual weekend t-shirt, great to make as a holiday top. I mean, truthfully, great to wear as a pyjama top. I mean, I'm looking at that and thinking, ooh, that looks comfy. So yeah, that's that. So I hope you enjoyed it. That's the Riviera Regatta t-shirts. And I know when you make it up, you're going to love it.